Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV with myself and tonight, Stocky, not Boz. Um, impromptu one. Yep. Mr. Evans was finally confirmed officially this afternoon. Starts work the news June we've the been 1st. waiting weeks for has the finally news we all come knew around. Since about what, Wickham away? Yeah. On about the 20th of February, it was um, no great shock. My stance hasn't changed. On it's hard to be excited, man. isn't it? Like, it depends on your opinions on him. Not a lot of people like Steve Evans. A few seem to be warming to the idea, don't they, on Twitter, based on his football results and what he can do to teams, what he's done previously at Crawley and Rotherham, Rotherham as well. Boston, if you ignore the extracurricular the stuff that he did. Mm. Um, but yeah, but then the other side, it is, or it leads or maybe if we're looking at it, Objectively, was the chairman was probably more of a lunatic than Steve Evans. Was it Chilina when it was an absolute yeah. nutcase? I don't think he's not allowed to be involved in football anymore, is he? No, he's as dodgy as ever. One of them who passed yeah. the fit and proper test <laughs> somehow. Um, so that one, I suppose you have to sort of give him the benefit of the doubt. It was a bit of a circus. But we had the added bonus today of the six-page le six letter from Mr Scully. Which Scully I think actually said in that report that Evans was a businessman, and I think he said like a good businessman as well. And I thought back to the Boston situation, and I thought that doesn't. Which we're not allowed to talk too much mm. about, obviously, because of. Doesn't we don't want to get in trouble. Ring quite true, though, does it? But it, yeah, it didn't make sense. But the first three pages were Mr. Scully talking about fans. Yeah. As he liked to keep putting. Keyboard it. warriors. Yeah, there was a lot, yeah. Um, what I've got some sympathy. My stance on it was the abuse that he quoted in the report suffering at Blackpool. Is not on. Is not on, in my opinion. But people that want to ch chant at the chanting game, we want Scully out. I don't see what the issue is. Fans have got their opinions. They're entitled to their opinions about the manager players. So the chairman doesn't become exempt. He's the manager. He's the sorry, the chairman of a football league club. It's not, in the public eye at the end of yeah. the day, like like we are, if, on a much bigger scale. If you're at the top, you're there to be shot at. Of course, it, yeah, and you, especially you like when. It or not, and it's how you handle Results it, aren't going well. It just seems like he's having a, having a little bit of a whinge, and I think he just needs to get beyond it. I mean, last, you know, this time last season, he was talking about joining Twitter, joining social media. That's the thing that don't help him again. He says he's going to do it, then he changes his mind, then he moans about it. But he, he would never be able to do But then he says he's still like looking at it media. from afar. So he's obviously being shown it all by someone else. Yeah, I'm sure he is. There'll be people. Which is fine. But, like you said, I'm exactly the same. And everyone knows our stance on this channel in terms of Paul Scally. We're not Scally in. We're not Scally out. We're, we're somewhere in the middle. Um, we've been accused of all sorts of stuff of, of being Scally in so that we can get interviews. Well, we don't get interviews because we're not allowed. So that's an absolute load of nonsense no, just to clear it up. Would... But... You know, we wouldn't be able to ask certain questions, would we? It'd be We tried to get Paul Scally on the channel on the back of a meeting that me and Dave went to at Christmas time and Mr Scally said, Yep, yeah, no problem, send an email into my secretary, Gwen Pointer. We've done that, we've gone through all the proper channels, we've not even had a reply. So we've been told that she never received the email, we've sent it again. So that's how much swing or whatever collateral you we're getting because we're doing a channel. So it's, it makes me laugh most of the time. I think going back to the Evans thing, people that don't like him or don't agree at the end of the day like you've got two choices some are going to boycott and that's fair enough they're within their rights to do so if Others you're not still going to go along and still going to go pay along their money and we'll, takes their chance they support the team I don't think no matter what he does it's weird isn't it because all for the last couple of seasons we've seen people tweeting certain fans support the team not the regime and it's now almost flipped on its head and it's the ones that were supporting the team at the time have now got to support the team not the regime, so mm. to speak, if that makes sense, because I can't get on board with it. I never once said no. I was happy with Steve Evans coming to the football club. Name won't be chanted ever. I don't think. I think even if he, unless it goes wrong quickly, yeah, then we not know what chant it'll be. Um, <laughs> then we know what chant yeah. it'll be. And it won't be as official. It won't be as real. It won't name. be positive chanting no. behind his name. Um, I don't think. Even if you know he did get us promoted, I can't. I don't know. I just can't see that much of a swing. Amongst fans, I know, it would take a monumental I know season, I think, wouldn't it? A bit fickle at times, but I think that would take a lot for fans to truly get behind him. Yeah, I think we'd probably have to win most games about 10 or 11 nil and 
he'd have to be like Mary Poppins and Mother Teresa for nine months. But we are fickle. If we're winning games, then obviously people might start to come back. And yeah. it's a similar sort of thing with the checker trade. We've had this debate, haven't we? If we got to Wembley, would we go to... I would. Yeah, but then I've been to some of the group yeah, stage games. So. You know. But some have said if they got to the Wembley, we wouldn't go. So if we got to the playoff final under Steve Evans, would those that have not been all season suddenly go, oh, I'll get a ticket, but just keep it quiet? Only they can answer that. I've said categorically, I'm still going to go to football matches. I'm still going to put money into the club because I love Gillingham Football Club more than I don't like Steve Evans at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. That's what it boils down to. And from, you know, you've got to kind of look at it. He's in charge now. Let's try and look for the positives. He normally requires a budget. So yeah, let's do it from just purely, let's strip all the, the layers back of Steve Evans, the person, and just go Steve Evans, the football manager. Not, not a club legends. All, all links away from the club. We've, Which is what we've, we've asked for on this channel, so we can't say that that's the wrong appointment in that sense. If you look at it from an objective point of view, it does tick a lot of boxes as to what people generally want, don't It's they? just a bit over the other side that is causing a lot of people an issue. Sure it is, clearly, yeah. yeah. But, um, so where we go, all the way back to Boston, got them promoted out of non-league, I think. Um, just the football, nothing else. And then where did he go next? Was it Crawley, Crawley after, after that? that? Yeah. Got them he promoted got them into the football then. league. Was he in charge of the season when they went to Man United and only lost one nil at Old Trafford, I think, in the Cup? About 2012, I'm sure he was, and they hit the bar in the last couple of minutes and nearly took them to a yeah. replay. So he done well at Crawley. Did he get them from like to I League think into one league, as well? He, definitely into the league. I'm not sure whether he went from League 2 to League 1. Well, he might have done, and then they went back down afterwards, yeah. Yeah, because then didn't he leave... Then he go Crawley to Rotherham, Rotherham. And then he got them promoted in 2014-15, I think. To the championship. To the championship. Or did he go back to back with them as well? I'm did not sure because get... Rotherham have spent a lot they, of time we... in different divisions. But he got promoted. We know yeah. he got promoted. Left Rotherham. Rotherham's the famous one, isn't it? The, the, the playoff goal at Wembley where he yeah. often had the touchline where well, people laugh and say there's a bird around on the they? corner flag. I think they were behind in the game. Down, yeah. I think, and went on 1-3-2. Um, was it then Leeds? He left them to go Leeds? which we've already touched on, was a bit of a circus. And that's not just him. So I'm not going to sit here and slag him off for the sake of it. Um, Chalina was a lunatic. I think they went through what... They were going through managers every five, six months at the time, I think. So you almost write that one off and sweep it under the carpet a little bit. Then it was... Mansfield after that, wasn't it? Mansfield. There wasn't one between Leeds and Mansfield, no. was there, I don't think. I think it took a bit of a break, then. So it? this is where I think... In the last two jobs, he's underachieved slightly. That's my own personal opinion as Steve Evans, the football manager, not anything else. I think he's... When he left, weren't they in the playoffs? What? Well, I just think the budget that he was given at Mansfield for a League Two side, I'd, I'd imagine that the the aim of the chairman would have been, you've got to get us promoted. And he left them outside the playoffs. Didn't leave them in great circumstances, by all accounts. We were rumoured to be involved or interested when AD went. And Scally admitted that he, he approached Mansfield and they rejected the, the advance, didn't they? So, And then he popped up at Peterborough, yeah, last job. How many players did they bring in last summer? 15? Quite a lot. Spent three quarters of a million, or the best part of it, on Ivan Tony. Spent quite a lot on Matt Godden. So you'd probably say there's a million on two players. Mm -hmm. So then it comes to budget. Are we going to have a million pound to spend on two players? No, because we... Uh... I can't see it. We still owe money to the... Well, Mr Scully, back to his letter again, has said, mm. we fully expect Steve Evans, who's a good football manager along these lines, to bring success to our football club within our budget. We shall see. Which ain't a lot, let's be honest. No. And it's probably... And although there's clubs in our division that have smaller budgets than us, our budget isn't what Steve Evans is used to. No, he's... Mm. Gonna have to get used to shopping in a freebie market, I think. It would be interesting, won't it? Um, I've just done a radio interview and said, if I was Steve Lovell from the outside looking in there, and suddenly this massive pot of gold becomes available, I'd be a little bit ticked off myself if now yeah. there's loads to spend. But That's who he trusts with it, though, because before it goes back to Scully taking, you know, every few seasons he takes that punt with money. The last time he took the punt Edinburgh. was with Edinburgh and. You know, it come back to bite him a bit, didn't it? So, and are we saying that I'd say Edinburgh was probably further along the line in terms of managerial mm. experience than Steve Lovell was? Because if you look at Steve Lovell prior to us, it was all youth stuff, development stuff, 
and I think you had two managerial jobs at Ashford and Sittingbourne. So you're going some way down the ladder. So from that point of view, maybe that's what it is. He would trust Steve Evans to spend it more because he's a good businessman. Allegedly. Have we summed it up? Or should we talk about next season? I think, just going back, people didn't want us to keep appointing you know, the club legends and people associated with the club. So so that's a tip for Mr Scully. A, yeah, that's generally what most people want. It's just he's not the one they want. The just without all the not, baggage, but, imagine, Leo, yeah. I would imagine, is, is the general consensus. But it's still a, it's still a, a tick in a box. The win percentage, I think I saw Reese tweet earlier, is about 40%. So another Which, tip, yeah, on paper is decent, isn't it for that for this level? Oh God, you probably won't get a manager with a much better win ratio. No, I mean, what was Lovell's when he left? Probably thirty, early thirties. Which again is not a disaster on the players he had available no. and the budget he had available. But like we all speak about progress, relative next levels, and all that. If we want to get to the next level, whatever that is, then it'd be. It's another tick for Steve Evans. Be very interesting. I'm not like they, myself. They've got the open mic night, haven't they, on the fourth of June? Tuesday, Tuesday the fourth of June. We've been June. invited to go over a question and answer session, so that'd be interesting. I'm up for attending that if if we can get there. Definitely. Yeah. We did last cool. year's and almost get answers from the horse's mouth, so to speak, because Mr. Evans, it seems, will be there. And hopefully, Mr. Scally will be there as well. We've been to the I've been to the last two. I've not been to any of them yet, and they they've been all right. Um, Again, if people are expecting they're going to find out the ins and the outs of a, the club's goings on on a daily basis, then you're going to be disappointed because there's stuff that they can't tell us because of legal obligations. So, But if you're going to go there and take it for what it is, a couple of hours of talking to the manager, talking to the chairman and finding out some stuff that you might not find out all the time, then I think it's, it's a worthwhile exercise. But people are known for the sake of it, wouldn't it? And I've seen a tweet tonight that says, I'm sure all the uh, scally outers will be there with all their questions lined up. Or will they be keyboard warriors, as Mr. Scully likes to uh, call them? But each to their own, like anything. Yeah, that's all we I can suppose say. Like that's all Scully can do at the moment, isn't it? Like he knows that the fans aren't receptive of the idea. Evans knows that himself. From no, and he's the put that in the report. he's put that in the letter, hasn't he? He said yeah, that he well, understands why. Evans would have been stupid not to have realised that. He knows the problems he's had with us as fans in the past. So yeah, he's probably very aware that he's got to hit the ground running in terms of. Contract situation. They might be doing it from the sideline, will they? Not for the first four games, I don't no. think. He'll be set up with Mr. Skelly. So what a lovely partnership. <laughs> That's for the podcast, not the channel. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. Next season. Obviously, it's a tricky one because we've got we've got no <laughs> goalies eight, at the moment. Eight players, no goalkeepers. We can. I did manage to scrape ten outfield players together at the moment from contracted players. I think we can right. play a back four, which would be Fuller, Amar, Zakwani, Garmston, right. Old Acre, Byrne, Riley, Charles Cook, Hand and List. But it's monkey rush. <laughs> so if any of you boys fancy her. Uh, There's a lot, <laughs> lot, lot of height in that team as well. It's massive. There? It's going to be yeah. quick but tiny. It's um, Fuller and uh, Burner swapping in goal. Yeah, or one on the other one's shoulders. Right. I'd go with Burner in goal. Burner on Guinness or Burner without Guinness? Either. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, next season, then, knowing generally what aspirations chairmen have when they employ Mr Evans, what would you consider a decent season for Gillingham? I'd say mid-table, to be fair. I think we've just got to build slowly but surely on the past few years. My aim for last season, last pre-season, was about 13th to 17th. And it's a weird is, one, wouldn't it, because of the, the mm, weird nature of the relegation but battle? I don't think just because Evans is coming in or whoever it was coming in, you can be looking at playoffs or... I think mid table has got if, got I think we're a bit game. deluded it, if you think he's going to come in and win us the no, league. It all depends who he brings in. Like It's hard to say at the That's moment. That's, again, his budget, isn't it? That's the big well, one. I'd say on the face of it, I think mid-table, an improvement on last year... You know, maybe times throughout the season we're kind of flirting with the playoffs, but I'd say an improvement. So anything season. sort of ninth to twelfth. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that would be a good. Because again, it was a weird one, wasn't it? We finished higher in the table by four places compared to 2017-18, but we was a point worse off because of this thing where up until about the start of March there was twelve teams in a relegation battle and the other twelve were flirting with the playoffs. It was a weird, weird division. But um, I think that's everything. I'd, I'm sorry, yeah, mine would be similar. I think as long as we can progress and I'd just like a season where we're not 
forever looking over our shoulder. Mm. To be at like Christmas and be on sort of 45 points would be lovely. Or is that too high? Is that a bit optimistic? Just basically not approaching the last five, six yeah, of the game. No, thinking we've got to scrape three or four wins together just to, just to keep us, our heads above water. It'd be oh. nice to approach the spring and be sitting in the top half and sort of 10 points plus clear of the relegation zone. I think whatever happens though next season is going to be interesting and bumpy. I think it's going to be a bumpy ride. We're not going to use Bozzy's prospective choice of hashtag for the channel next season, which was a strap in. Purely on the basis that if you have one slight typo in that, we get quite a lot of dodgy followers mm. and weird websites trying to find us. <laughs> um, again, that might be something you want to talk about on the podcast. You've got some ideas for the pod, and I think a big thank you from Stocky and Boz and myself as well. Obviously, I've not been on it yet. Um, You're not being on it either. At HQ. Headquarters. Couldn't go to HQ tonight. Apparently, it's not ready, so we're still here. No, Boz is asleep, so... Can't allow you in just but yet. yeah, no, we, it, over hundred listens already. I think and yeah, the feedback's been it. really good. Yeah, we've enjoyed it. Um, It'll improve it when the main man comes on. Yeah, obviously, but we've got yeah, to find someone. Well, yeah. we have to get you out your contract from Talksport now, aren't we? You can't afford. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good. Me and Boz appreciate all the comments. Um, started off as a trial, and we enjoyed doing it. I'm glad our people have enjoyed listening. Um, this week, hopefully, going to have a bit of a subject on there. So, if anyone wants to submit their ideas, we're looking for stupid slash daft fan experiences. At, I've got at one already. Game. Go for it. Go on, you can, you <laughs> Guess, can start it off as an example. Geezer at Cardiff at home, but Alex Lazy cleared it into the Medway stand, and he decided oh, he yeah. entered it, and he nearly fell out the top tier. That's that he nearly died effectively. Yeah, we all laugh about it now, but that's one for mm, me straight yeah, away. That's, exactly, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. Stupid slash daft. So. We did ask, but we did say that if one of the podcasts, if we ever gave it a Twitter page, got to so many retweets, Boz would eat salad, and he went into hiding for about 48 hours, I think, for him just disappeared and started crying in a corner. Um, we've got... I've put ideas to you. you you're you're, you're going to do it well enough. I have every yeah, confidence in you. It will be me. It won't be Boz. I've already asked him for ideas, and he's useless. The man is useless. We're still waiting for him to get um, emails from people to find out what the best apps to use, aren't we? So... <laughs> But anyway, we've got off on a tangent. Thanks from Stocky and Boz for all the support on the uh, pilot episode of Jules in the Blood Injury Time. G-I-T-B-I-T. Are we sticking with that name or are we going to put... I'm quite happy with that name. We'll go with that for now. I decided on, what was mine? Regan's Laugh. The Regan's Laugh podcast. Rubbish. His dad might like it. Mm. We still need... Or another one I go with tonight was Up the Sean. Up Sean, yeah. That's almost as dodgy as um, Strap On. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Strap in. so we'll stick with Jules in the blood injury time for now um, as always thanks for listening to us talk about football a rabbit in on Steve Evans is the man moving forward starts work officially June the 1st it'll be interesting to keep an eye on the club social media accounts over the next few weeks I'm sure contract renewals and signings will start to filter through as he has effectively been in the job since the middle of February um, yeah strap yourselves in and hold on to your lunch. Hashtag strapping. <laughs> Until next time, up the chills. <laughs>